Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Zaid's Experience. So today, I'm going to update you on the Carnivore 3.0 diet. There's been several changes worldwide. Along with that, I had to readjust a lot of things in my life, and so that really, really changed things and this diet. And obviously, you guys can see some obvious changes. So come with me, and I'll explain to you guys what's been going on here. Joining me on another episode of Zay's Experience, guys. Please go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you like this video by the end, please go ahead and give it a like. I would really, really appreciate it. Also, hit that notification bell. That way, you guys get notified every time I come up with a video such as this. Okay, but first of all, I'm gonna start addressing the obvious. Yes, I did cut off my beard and I did cut off my mustache. I took it all off. I think it was just time and also I I felt I needed a drastic change there was a lot of things that were happening at the moment obviously such as this global pandemic but we'll leave that for a little bit and there was also a lot of changes that took place in my life there's a lot of things that changed and I felt I needed some kind of revamp of my own life I started reading some of the books I started doing some of the stuff that I hadn't had enough time to do in my life to take care of me. Even though I, ha I was exercising, even though I was doing a couple of other things, I wasn't really taking care, care of my mental thoughts, of my overall well-being. There's a lot of things that get tied into that, but I think the biggest thing for me is I always like to do a drastic change. I like to do a big, big change all the time. And taking my beard off was the perfect way I'm um, taking my mustache off, I think was the perfect way for me. So let me know what you guys think. I know it's super weird. I think it's this is the first time that I, since I've had this channel that I actually have my beard this short. My girlfriend didn't want me to take the entire thing off. She was like, no, nah, you're gonna look ugly. You're gonna look like a naked mole rat, which she tells me that I look like anyways all the time. So <laughs> let me know down in the comment section how this looks guys. And don't worry about it. The beard will grow back within a year, same length down here. There's no problem. What do you call that thing? Uh, with the clippers, it was down like it was using the, the number one guard. And now it's um, using the number four guard and it's only been like a week. So trust me, there's no issue with me regrowing a beard. <laughs> now on to the second thing. Willie, I'm checking. My cat's here, meowing. The second thing that I think is uh, something a little bit heavier, for me at least. Actually first, let me start off by saying, unless you've been living under a rock, you know what's been going on with the whole COVID-19 thing, and there's a lot of stuff that's been going on along with that. But as far as the carnival, how it affected the carnivore 3.0 diet, for obvious reasons, the gym started to close by, my therapy session started to get canceled, visits to the doctor started to get canceled, a lot of things started to get canceled, social distancing, like a bunch of stuff just started happening, and so that affected me continuing the progress that I was having with the carnivore 3.0 diet and so I've decided to postpone that for a time where I can really really assess the results that this diet is going to get me more accurately because I think that's the biggest thing is to bring um, accurate changes and to deliver them in a very uh, concise way, in a very controlled environment. And yeah, every now and then you lose control. Like you can't have control of everything, you know? But there's too many variables that change, too many things that really, really, really changed. And so that makes, that makes it really, really hard for me to continue on with this carnivore diet and really keep it within the confinements that I wanted to keep it. One of the biggest things that changed and that is very obvious and I'm, I'm still very grateful to be here, you know, in many ways, but uh, I'm currently at a job. I have, I don't have a job or anything like that. So that's been the biggest thing and uh, for obvious reasons, you know, this carnivore diet can get a little pricey, but with some of the changes that I made, it actually started to get a little bit pricier. But even if I was able to manage all that stuff, there still wasn't enough food at the stores for some time. You guys have all seen those photos of those empty shelves of both meat, uh, the meat racks, chicken, eggs, and obviously toilet paper. <laughs> so yeah, guys, that's, that's, that's something that's definitely affected this carnivore diet. So I'm gonna definitely postpone that for a time 
that better permits when all this COVID thing ends up dissolving or ends up being in a more controlled environment, you know? Um, although I could be going outside, uh, outside to jog every single day and outside to running and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. The guidelines have been that we keep inside as much as we can. Although it has been wreaking a little bit of havoc up here, you know? That's also another reason why I needed to take care of myself. You know, again, it, it, it sucks, no job. Luckily I have my health, luckily I'm, I'm very lucky to have my health. I have a roof on top of my head. I plan for a situation such as this, so there's some decent amount of cash backing the next couple of months up, of car payments and everything. I have a girlfriend that really supports me, that's very, very supportive, and she's actually working still. She has been deemed essential. She's working at a daycare center and she is actually at risk more than I am and she's been doing her own you know solitary confinement coming back home here and she's been keeping away from her mom so um, obviously it hasn't affected me as much as it affected her but her mom's relatively on the older side and so she needs she wants to keep away just in case something like this could possibly affect her you know so again I'm very fortunate I'm very lucky I have everything I need here and so some of the things that I've been doing is to try and keep sane up here, <laughs> at least is I've been playing my instrument, but I know that might sound like a little dumb or whatever. For me, it's really, really good. It helps out with my mental agility. It helps out with me just keeping relaxed. That's my meditation. I know a lot of people say meditation is great for you. If you've never played an instrument, try doing that. At one point you will decide you want to break the instrument, but at another point you will decide that or you will realize, I should say, that there is something about playing an instrument that nothing can replace. There's just nothing that compares to it, in my opinion, and all musicians can probably attest to this. There's nothing that speeds up your brain more than doing that. There's nothing that keeps your brain as mentally agile, you know, word problems, all that. I used to do crossword puzzles. I used to play chess like crazy. And to be honest, I, I found nothing that keeps my brain as mentally active, agile, and working it properly as doing as playing an instrument. So I've been playing my instrument way more. Second, in regards to my health, my physical health, that was my mental health. For my physical health, what I've been doing is I've been walking quite a bit. I've been walking 15,000 steps and you know, um, walking is a little bit different from running, but one of the main reasons why I am walking and not running is mainly because right before, during actually, during these past two weeks, my hip problem flared up right before this whole COVID-19 thing started and I started going to see a therapist. I even had to go to the ER room, so it was pretty big. And that started to flare up and so, I've been doing all the exercises that they gave me for therapy. I've been doing everything, but it's it's still flaring up quite a bit. And the whole shoulder thing, that's hasn't gone any better. So yeah, that's, that's definitely been putting a, a big halt to this as well. So walking is my best choice. I've been stretching as much as I can. That's, again, that's for my physical health. And it's been helping. 15,000 steps every day it goes a long way if you do them properly. If you spread them out throughout the entire day, you do 8,000 in the morning, 8,000 in the afternoon, that's all you can do. That's, that's more than enough, to be honest. I think in my opinion, especially if you're doing it every day consistently. Another thing that I've been doing, cold showers. Cold showers is something that just worked and I, I did it on the Carnivore 3.0 thing. And by the way, let me say uh, before I continue, I haven't stopped eating carnivore at all, just so you guys know. Just incorporating way more of these things that I wanted to to tell you about within the carnivore 3.0 videos that I, series that I was making. I'm just doing it as a regular thing now. It's my lifestyle now. So the cold showers at least once a day have been really, really good. And I do see a change. I really do see a change like from one day to the next, especially if I take a shower in the morning and if I take a shower right before going to bed, I feel that the next morning my stomach gets a little bit leaner just from taking that cold shower. And it is five to six minutes at least. And it's pretty cold, you know, it's not like an ice bath, but it really does help. So I'm about to take a cold shower. I have not prepared at all, but trust me, this is still painful even after what the third week but we're going in for eight minutes let's go ahead and do this shall we oh 
only cold water. Timer. Another thing, again, for the more physical aspect of this, has been doing some stretching, as I told you already. I've been stretching here and there um, with what I got around the house. I'm gonna be buying some bands, some resistant bands, so that way I can get a couple of workouts in here with the resistance bands. And although my therapy guys have, both for the shoulder and my hip, have given me some bands, they're very light, and I told them, I know I'm recovering, but they're just extremely light, and I, I really don't feel like I get a good workout from them. So if you guys recommend any resistance bands, please go ahead and leave them down in the comment section. I would really appreciate that. There's so many brands, and it's tough to trust any of them. <laughs> or, you know, something that's just gonna be insanely overpriced. I mean, they are just roar bands. And I've seen them go from 100 to 200 easily, like for complete packages. It's crazy, but heck. And also, is it just me or people going crazy buying kettlebells? There's no freaking kettlebells anywhere. You go, you can go and look and there's no kettlebells. There's no weights and everybody is bumping up the price on OfferUp, on all kinds of web pages. They're, they're bumping up the prices ridiculously, so. Shame on you. <laughs> Finally, one of the last things that I've been doing for my physical health is, again, something that I incorporated with my carnivore diet for quite some time, and that was fermented foods. I've told you guys several times I've been going in a fermented food craze, and I started to reincorporate those fermented foods, and I told you that for the carnivore 3.0 diet, I was going to reincorporate a couple of fermented foods, one or one or two fermented foods at least. But once I started to try them out while doing the carnivore diet, I got up to the uh, up to the seventh week. I didn't put, post any of those videos because obviously all the stuff that was happening and I just had too much in my hands and my brain, I, when I got, by the time I got home, I just, I didn't have any energy and I didn't want to put a shitty video together for you guys, you know? Uh, or something that I didn't want to put together for you guys. And all the fermented foods that I decided to incorporate helped out the diet so, so much, guys. If you guys are doing a carnivore diet, I highly, highly suggest if you if you add anything, add fermented food. You guys know that I've been going on a craze, especially kefir. Kefir is the main thing that I highly recommend. If you don't do anything and if you're lactose intolerant, kefir is one thing that actually is super low in lactose because the kefir grains actually dilute all the lactose or eat all the lactose and you end up with very very small amounts of lactose so you won't be getting the runs which is always a great thing kefir was one thing that i started to reincorporate and it really really helped kimchi kimchi is something that i really really like and it's awesome it works really well but i decided to start making my own and let me show you guys so here i'm about to do my own kimchi uh this is basically two napa cabbages that I've squished down right now, they're just kind of draining. If you can see all this liquid, is because I added a bunch of salt to it. That way the salt drains out all the liquid and um, it dries it out as much as possible. Then I'm gonna give it a rinse and then I'll add all the extra spices and everything from, from there. I have been buying kimchi and, and this is the kimchi that I've been buying and I really like it, I really like the flavor but I've heard that there's nothing better than making your own kimchi at home, so I'm giving it a shot. And besides with the amount that I'm eating of this, I, <laughs> I really thought it'd be better to make it at home and it's super, super cheap to make it at home. This thing is like six, seven bucks. Um, and that after a while, especially with me having no job, uh, can actually really affect me. Also, another thing that I made, sauerkraut. This thing was full about a week ago. My girlfriend said, the store-bought one is way better. And then she tried this and she was like, oh my God, the store-bought one is shit. Um, so <laughs> we've been eating this like crazy. So I serve a little bit of kimchi with every meal, a little bit of sauerkraut with every meal. And that's the biggest one. Th th those are the biggest two. And then, as you guys know, my kefir, as you can see, it's splitting apart. It's perfect it's actually time i always leave it for 48 hours i like to get as much as the lactose out i want to get as much as the sugar broken down as possible i make sure to leave it for two days in my counter so i'm going to be straining that pretty soon and the other one that i've been wanting to do for some time is 
sriracha sauce. And for all those of you guys that don't know, sriracha is actually fermented. You heard me right, it's actually fermented. Let me show you. So here is some sriracha sauce, guys, that I made and it's already fermenting. So basically how it works is you pick some red peppers that you guys like. I use the Fresno peppers because they're right in the middle. They're not too sweet, they're not too spicy. They're just about right. I did want to throw an habanero there, but first of all, I want to try it without any, like, you know, anything crazy, like the way the sriracha sauce was meant to be. I put in some ginger, some garlic in there, salt, and a little bit of sugar. The reason why you put in sugar is because that will help this ferment. And at the end, it will not be sweet at all. The bacteria are gonna eat that sugar. They're gonna feed upon that sugar. And that's what's basically gonna ferment it. So all you need to do is you put all that stuff in a blender, you blend it all up, and you leave it on the bowl. That's it. You leave it on the bowl for five days, five, seven days outside, cover it up, turn it every day with a spoon. You'll start to see bubbles develop. Turn it, turn it around with a spoon, and that's it. That's all you need to do. And you have homemade sriracha sauce, guys. So I'm really stoked to see how that's gonna come out. I like I like spicy food guys. I really do like spicy food and I'm gonna be super stoked if this comes out tasting yummy. But we'll see within five days. I just started off today, so we'll see how that ends up. And again, it's about five days to just make that sriracha sauce. I can wait five days. And that was a very small amount of Fresno chilies that I bought because I wanted to see how it tasted first. Then afterwards, if it tastes great and you know, it's a fermented food, so it does have a lot of the fermented benefits as well, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch. And lastly, my kombucha. I do have kombucha. Yes, I make my own kombucha, I'm that guy. We have two going on here. We have this one, his name is Bucci, which is almost gone. And the other one is the Scoby or Scooby. Those are the names for them. And we've been fermenting them but yeah, guys, that's basically it. I've been adding a bunch of fermented foods to my regular diet, to my carnivore diet. And the only other thing that I've been eating um, here and there is berries. Berries, I think, go a really, really long way, and I think they really, really work. And if you guys are ever getting a sweet tooth or anything like that, and if you're trying to reach out for like some really shitty food that you shouldn't be eating, I highly recommend to get berries. Berries are super low in carbohydrates, they're super low in sugars, and they have a bunch of stuff that's really good for you. They got really decent amount of vitamins as well. So go ahead and check that out if that's something that works for you guys. Again, I'm not in it to get the carnivore badge of honor. You're 100% carnivore 100% of the time. Well, 365 days, seven days, it's, it's just not, at the moment, it's not my priority. I like the carnivore diet, I like the benefits that it brings to me. I've been adding these fermented foods because I've been seeing the difference and it really, really is a big, big difference. I've been adding those berries here or there because they make a difference. And that's, I think, the bottom line. Change is happening and I think it's time to adapt with it. And I think these changes that happen, although they might not seem for the best for me at the moment, you know, they'll have to do. But I am gonna ask of you guys more now more than any any other time please go ahead comment like and subscribe you guys know the deal push that notification bell if you haven't already done so definitely definitely leave a comment down there let me know if you guys want to see the recipe for this kimchi that I'm doing you know that's not the only thing right now this is I barely started making my own kimchi today but I have a really good recipe from somebody that really knows their shit. so I really trust that person and I tried the kimchi so I'm gonna be making my own, hopefully it comes out just as good as that person or even better. If you wanna know how to make kefir, I'll definitely go ahead and show you guys if you want me to teach you how to make that sriracha sauce. It's super, super simple. How to raise your own scoby, your, make your own kombucha, make it alcoholic or not. Um, <laughs> it all depends. Um, would you like me to post up a video of what I eat a day in the life of a carnivore, you know, like the, those kinds of things. Guys, let me know down in the comment section below. I really, really need you guys more than ever. So I would really appreciate it if you left any kind of comments, subscribe and push that notification bell. But that is it for today, guys. Sorry if I've been a little bit MIA. Uh, I promise I'll be on it now. Trust me, I have plenty of time. Zay, out. Stay safe and peace, guys.